In your Spring Boot applications, you can do things like the add value annotation or the add config props annotation to pull up values from your property files. But essentially what you're doing there is kind of value injection. You're not looking it up, you're having Spring inject the values to your code. Now, what if you want to look it up? There is a way you can do that by using this environment object, which provides you a little more control over looking up what the profile is, looking up what the property values are and all that stuff. And you can actually do that in your code. I'll show you how to do that. So environment is a bean that you can inject, you can auto wire into your application, into your classes, and then access the configuration values using it. You can figure out what the active profile is and you can actually look up values using this object. I'll show you how to do that in this tutorial. So let me actually set up a new endpoint in my controller and I'm gonna call this environment details, okay? So I'm gonna use a get mapping and um, let's say slash env details, okay? And I'm just using this because I want some place where I can make a get request and look up values. So I'm gonna call the method env details, just returns a string. And uh, now here, I want to return environment information. Now, how do I get this environment information? I can get it by auto-wiring uh, an object of this type called environment. So I'm gonna say auto-wired, and then this is private environment, and this is from that spring package, not the other one, env. And now here I can use this env object to look up profile, for example, let's say env dot. And now here you see there is get active profiles, get default profiles. There's a whole lot of methods over here. See here, get active profiles. So this is gonna give me options to look up profile information I can find. So get active profile returns a string array. So it can tell me what are all the active profiles that are available. Now I can, let's say I do, a, let me do two string for the env object itself so that I can print out everything that it can offer for me. I'm gonna restart the application. And if I were to access env details, here you see all the information that it throws out. So it has active profile, say it's test, right? So test uh, profile is active. It's an array with just one element. And then default is by default active and it goes into the default profiles list. You have a bunch more stuff here. You have server.port, you have sublet context init params, you have uh, the YAML files that are currently active. You see class path application test.yaml and then class path application.yaml. These are all the YAML files that are currently being used as a source for the properties, okay? You can use this. So in addition to profiles, you can also get the property itself. You see here there is get property, which takes in string, get property, which takes in a string and then a default value as well. So you have a lot of ways in which you can get the value. You have ability to resolve the placeholders. You can resolve a placeholder on a string by looking up properties. So everything that you saw the Spring framework do for your property files, you actually have API access to it and you can do it on your own, okay? So the reason you can do this is because the environment type extends the property resolver internally in Spring. You don't have to worry about this, but whatever is the property resolver, which actually does all this job internally in the Spring framework, the environment type extends it. So you actually get control over it and you can programmatically access what Spring does by default. So basically you can look up profiles, you can look up properties, but let me tell you that this is a bad idea. You should not look up profiles using this because, why? Because it affects testability. Let's say you have code which says, okay, if the environment that I'm running is in test, do this. If the environment is prod, do something else. Well, how do you test that thing? No, it's hard, you cannot do that. So you should not look up profiles to do business logic based on the environment. All right, how about profiles? You shouldn't do that too, because you should be doing 
injection, value injection. You should not do value lookup. You should do the at value and you should do this dollar curly brace syntax to do placeholders and resolve values rather than having it looked up manually. Okay, so while I've told you what the environment object is, I'll also tell you, you shouldn't be using it. I'm just telling you because if there is a real need and you have to look it up, it's there. You might encounter code where someone has actually done it. Not a good idea, but someone has done it. Well, then you know what it is and you can understand it. So over here, we just don't tell you what to use. We also teach you something that you shouldn't be using and then tell you not to use it, okay? So, well, it is there. Use it if you should, but then try to avoid it as much as you can and use these other mechanisms. For profiles, you should use values and then use different profile annotated beans for different kind of behavior functionality affecting different environments. And for values, just use the at value and then the config props and then have spring inject the values because it becomes easy to test it. If you're looking it up, it becomes hard. You're gonna have to mark the thing and then supply different values. But injection, testing is always easy, which is why it's a very recommended practice. So this is environment. So while environment is something that you shouldn't use, the next tutorial I'm gonna tell you something that you should use and which we will be using in the rest of this series, which is a Spring Cloud Config Server. I'll tell you what the Spring Cloud Config Server is and why you should be using it. So check out this next tutorial. See you there.